Painting Cranes in Watercolor with a Limited Palette by Hajra Meeks. I have always been fascinated by the beauty and delicacy of Japanese cranes and how they dance, so I thought they'd be perfect for watercolor. So here's a pencil drawing I did of them, um, inspired by a documentary I was watching. Remember to only use the minimum amount of lines here because you want to draw later with your paint on your watercolor paper. I'm also pulling out these colors and you'll notice that again I'm using a limited palette. This time it's Payne's Gray Bluish, Prussian Green, and Alizarin Crimson. So the Prussian Green is only slightly more green than the Payne's Gray Bluish which is on the left and the Alizarin Crimson is down there um, on the bottom of the index card and the Prussian Green is on the right. So you can see that there's a very limited palette that I'm using here and it's going to make for a very magical, mystical, sort of like misty um, feeling. That's a lot of M words. Um, so I'm gonna now start painting. And you can see that I'm starting with the, the red part of the head on the cranes. Now this is actually skin on the cranes. It's not feathers. So you have to try to make sure you don't make it look too fluffy. And what I'm doing is painting this on wet on dry. And what this means is that you take a little bit of red on a small brush, it could be a spotter or a very small round brush, size zero or double zero, and then you apply it in without too much water in the paint, just a little part of the red, and then you blend out some of that red with another wet brush that just has water on it. I'm going to do the exact same thing with the beak, so I'm going to put on some of this purplish gray that I've mixed, and then I'm going to blend out some of that line with a wet brush. And this makes for a very effective shaded line or shaded shape in whatever area you're doing this in because it'll give you one hard edge and one soft edge. And once you learn how to do this, that's some of the most useful kind of shading that you can do in any kind of watercolor painting. Now I'm doing the head first because there's no point in leaving this head, which is the hardest, for the last uh, part of this painting because if I mess up on it later then I'll have to start over and if I do it first then at least I know I've messed up on it and I can start over almost right away. You can of course try not to mess up but the whole point is I like actually getting the hardest part out of the way first so I know that I'm not nervous about whether or not I'm going to screw it up later. So now I'm doing the neck um, in a more gray gray instead of a purpley gray. So this is actually just the Payne's gray bluish with a little bit of alizarin mixed into it, but not enough alizarin to make it more purple like the bee because I want it to read as black. And I'm not using a true black which is going to make this look more alive and less dead on the paper because you should really be careful how you use black. So I'm using this this sort of black that's standing in for black, but it's actually a mix of these colors that I'm using. Um, so now if you mix the Prussian Green and the Alizarin Crimson and the Payne's Gray Bluish, you'll find you actually get a nice charcoal-y color, and that's what I'm using here. I've moved on to the eye, and I'm doing the exact same thing, except for with the eye there is no wet edge blending. It's going to be completely dry brush, which is using the paint just a teeny bit wet, and then no... Um, wet paper underneath it and no wet brush on top of it so of course the eyeball doesn't blend out and disappear because it's a very tiny exact space. Make sure you leave a little white spot in the eyeball otherwise your eye will not look shiny and it won't look like a real eye. So I'm continuing with the crest and that part of the head is actually white so I'm using a little bit of purpley red so more like a red violet. Now I'm going to use the red violet and I'm going to use more violet to actually color all the parts of the crane that are actually white. So it'll make it look like it's the shadow on the white parts of the feather. And I'm actually going to use more of this than leave more of it white because I want it to look a little bit more magical. And you know, you might think it makes your bird look like it's purple, but really it's supposed to read as the bird being white and then the shadow on the feathers is purple and red violet. And because I'm staying within this limited color scheme, I really can't go wrong with how these colors look next to each other. Um, it's not going to look jarring next to the Alizarin Crimson or next to the Payne's Gray because these colors are mixed from those colors. So this purple that I'm using right now is mixed from Payne's Gray and Alizarin Crimson so it's not going to look bad next to it. Whereas if I just chose some random purple out of my palette, that could be a danger. And I'm choosing also to use a cooler purple in some places and a warmer purple in other places. And 
you'll see what I mean um, when I get to a little bit of the later part of the bird. So the part that's right next to the neck is actually a cooler purple. It's more violet. And this part that's further along on the bird, on the wing, I'm actually making it a warmer purple, so more of a red violet, because I want to make it look like the wing is closer to us than the other part of the bird, the neck, because I want it to look like that the wing is more coming towards us and the neck is further away. And you can do this just by color temperature. This is a very limited palette, so you're not going to do it in, in very many different ways. You know, I could use more contrast or more color temperature, but I actually have a very limited palette, so I'm only working with what I have here. And I'm applying this again wet on dry. Some of it is wet on wet, which means I wet the paper first and then I drop in the paint so that it blurs all around and that way it gives you that soft cloudy um, look to it and that's great for making fluffy feathers. And then where it's the edge of the feathers, I do it wet on dry, which is I leave one edge dry and one edge I blend away with wet so that you have the outline, there's a dry harder line, and then the inside of the feather or the inside of the wing is actually going to be blurred away. And now you can see I'm doing the further back part of the bird. It's getting to be his back wing and also near his you know, tail. And you can clearly see how now this purple is definitely cooler than the red violet that I used on his front wing. And again, it throws the back wing and the rest of his back half more into shadow and makes it look further back on the picture plane than the front wing. And it's very effective even for such a washy painting because this isn't a multi-layered piece where I'm going to come back with more colors and more layers. This is actually a very washy style that I'm doing here because I want these birds to look very floaty on the paper. I don't want them to sit very heavily. So this whole piece is very limited in how many layers I'm doing. And so it's good for painters who are starting out because it's actually just more or less one layer of color in each area instead of it turning into something where you have several layers of color to build realism. So I finished this one bird wet into dry and wet into wet as you can see and the second bird's going to look exactly the same. So there are no new methods in how I do the back wing on this bird or the rest of the painting which is the other bird and so I'm going to leave it at this and not show you the other bird so you don't get bored. What I will show you is what I'm going to do for the background and actually there's a few different options for the background. You can do trees um, like I've done at the top and you can also do more of an abstract sort of just wet into wet clouds background which is more simple which is the middle one and I've just done this on three little thumbnails so you can see really quickly what's going on obviously those birds are not a final piece um, so you can see in the second one I've also thrown in a little bit of a horizon line landscape very very blurry and I'm also going to show you just another tree or two at the top because I don't think my camera was running when I was doing the rest of those trees. So you can see that I'm doing those trees just by putting in some wet paint um, on top of some dry paint and blending in edges and leaving some white. And the bottom landscape is background is just a cloudy sky. So you can throw in some stars. You can see that you can put white gouache in or splatter some white paint in later for the stars. But I don't really typically like that. So I'm actually just going to leave it as a cloudy sky if I choose to do that. So now you can see what I've done for the finished painting. And I finished the second bird and I decided to use a mix of the trees and the cloudy background to do for my background because I actually liked two of them a lot. So I did both. <laughs> Have fun making your own cranes in washi watercolor with a limited palette.